thank you. Uh, thank you, Jacques. Uh, thank you, Eben. Uh, Jacques, I think uh, the obvious thing is you can just run us through the changes. Uh, we know on wing there's there's obviously injury, uh, the decision that's scrum off, and then uh, obviously the bench going 5-3 uh, split this time. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, obviously the the the, um, the the changes, if I take it from, from fullback uh, or from 15, is uh, obviously Warwick is in for Jesse. Uh, um, we got in, we got concussed uh, when we played um, New Zealand, and then Faf is back um, after his concussion and his return to play has finished. So um, uh, we're bringing him in, and then uh, yeah, we went with a five-three split. And again, um, the reason for that is uh, yeah, some uh, we've got uh, we feel uh, tactically that's what we will need when uh, if we play against uh, when we play against Australia. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much the changes. Then I leave somebody out. No, that's fine. If I may follow up, Jacques, and, and last one from me is um, obviously there was big disappointment after the All Black loss at Ellis Park. Uh, have you guys worked through that? And, and what do you expect from the Wallabies this time around? No, yes, yeah. Now, obviously, we were disappointed um, uh, with the loss. We're always disappointed with the loss, and we had such a great opportunity, you know. I don't think. A lot of teams in the history had, uh, had the opportunity to to go back to back against uh, the All Blacks, and and I, I guess we put us um, for us the positive um, uh, out of that game is uh, we got ourselves in a hole uh, in the first half, um, being 15 nil down, but we clawed our way back, and I and I think it was uh, about 72 or 73 minutes on the clock where we were leading the game with them having uh, going down to 14 men, you know. So I think. Um, the disappointing part is uh, we probably uh, could have closed that game out uh, uh, better, you know, and, and they are not uh, pointing any fingers at, at the players. Uh, you know, it's us as a group that probably could have handled that a little bit better. And, and a group, there was some naive uh, uh, decisions by us as coaches. And uh, so we, we obviously had a hard look in terms of that. Um, uh, and and we will we, we'll keep building on that. And... Uh, uh, yeah, in terms of Australia, yeah, I think they're pretty much in the same boat as us. They they would like to come back uh, from from uh, their uh, loss against Argentina, just like we would like to come back uh, and and uh, get a positive turnaround after our loss against New Zealand. So I think that's what we expect from them, pretty much what I think they'll expect from us. Mubin? Uh, Mubin, I think there's a problem with your mic, so we'll go to Kanyiso. Um, thank you very much, Zina. Good uh, morning, everyone. I'm um, Jacques. A short twofold question. Why the team announcement on the Monday? And just talk us through how you intend on using Damien and Warwick as a 14 15 combination. Yeah, no, um, yeah, the, 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 the team announcement, yeah, I guess it would be weird um, in terms of we announcing it this early. But if you think about it, we, we were supposed to travel on Thursday and then actually the plane got a little bit delayed. So we traveled on Friday. And uh, um, yeah, we got here on. Uh, we actually got an extra day, and the whole squad is here. And we act, we announced this, the, the 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 team to the players already on. When was it on Sunday? On Sunday or we'll Saturday? Yeah, Sunday. So uh, for us, listen, the, and and we know when when we announce it uh, uh, to the players, it's probably going to come out within a within a day or two. You know, and even when when people go to the the training sessions, they probably get a pretty good idea of of who's going to who's going to start and who's not going to start. So for us, I mean, there's no there's no reason for us to to keep it back. We the players know. Uh, we know, uh, and like I said, we actually, when uh, with us traveling here a little bit earlier, we, we we actually started our preparation a day earlier. So, and that's that's the reason. The moment we, the moment we have clarity of the team, the players know uh, uh, the team, and they, uh, they, they, for us, we feel there's no reason to 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 without to keep the team back. I mean, it's it's probably going to come out in any way. Christy, sorry, it's a small two-part question. Um, the intention of, of, of Warwick at 14 and how you're going to use them with a Damien at 15? Yeah, I think uh, um, it's a nice opportunity for 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 uh, for Warwick, you know, uh, and uh, he's been part of us for, for quite some time. He's played for us wing before uh, in the World Cup, uh, I think against Canada, he played wing for us. Uh, so 
and 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 he knows our system as a 15 and as a 14. And obviously, we would have loved to give him an opportunity at 15. But um, yes, with the bad luck we had at 14, uh, or right wing uh, this season, if you think about, yes, we uh, we lost Cheslin, uh, Sabu is still injured, uh, Kurtley uh, uh, got a red card, uh, then we 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 opted to go with with JC, he got concussed. So I mean, we can't. I don't. I think it's impossible to plan uh, um, for so many injuries in 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 one. Uh, position, you know, I think it's our, uh, and not our fifth choice, but I mean, uh, um, it's 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 the fifth uh, um, level deep that we we play our uh, uh, worry, you know. So, but excited uh, to 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 have him there again, and playing for us at at fourteen, and obviously had a good URC. He and Gaza knows uh, knows each other well. Uh, I think Gaza. Uh, or Damien Willem says as as really excelled uh, and uh, at 15 uh, this year for us, and he's really taken his opportunity, and he's almost trying to to make that position his own, you know. So he's uh, he's uh, performing well, and like I said, it would have been awesome to 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 give Warwick opportunity at 15, but uh, the the he he gets his opportunity now because of where we are at right wing. Uh, in terms of all the players that we've lost there, uh, that he's going to get an opportunity there. And for us, from a tactical point of view, there's not a big difference between 15 and uh, 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 and 14, in our opinion. You know, so um, uh, if you if you look at Kurtley as well, Kurtley plays 15 for the Bulls, but he played 14 for us. And I, I thought he had an excellent uh, performance there in the two tests that he played. So, yeah, pretty much looking forward to the chemistry between uh, uh, Damien and, and Warwick. They've, they've, they've been playing uh, um, there for a while together. Christy? Hi, Jack. Uh, welcome to Australia. Um, just following up on the, the team announcement stuff, do you mind? Like, do you think that there is an advantage for an opposition to, to discover the team so early? Yes, like, like I said, for us, for us, I, I don't know. I, I'm, uh, I think that's probably something you'll have to ask uh, uh, our opposition. But for us, I feel we've got a pretty good idea of who's going to play against us uh, or the team that will get selected on 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 Saturday from Australia. I mean, you've you probably wonder about one or two positions, maybe you know. So I think uh, in terms of that. Coaches normally have, or we we normally have a very a, a good idea of who's going to play against us in any way. So I, I'm not sure if mm. that's benefiting them or not. But uh, in terms of us, uh, um, uh, for us, if we have announced it to our uh, uh, to our if, if, if our players know who's going to play on on Saturday, we don't we don't feel that. Um, uh, keeping it under wrap uh, uh, is it, 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 it's better for us to announce it, get it out of the way. The players can settle. We can start training, um, and and it is what it is. Lloyd? Yeah, and if I can just ask one more, um, there's been you know criticism, perhaps uh, labelled that um, the Springboks didn't you know name Malcolm Marks to start and to start again this test. But do you think that the benefit of um, building depth and, and depth within the squad actually um, helps the Springboks ultimately on their quest to win another World Cup? Uh, you know, we, we've got a specific, uh, which we probably wouldn't like to have to go into too much detail, but there's, there's uh, um, how can I say, there's technical reasons why we select the team like we select. I've, 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 I've said it numerous times in the in the media that, listen, we don't see, uh, and that's probably where we're a little bit different, we don't see, uh, 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 we see our front rows, uh, uh, um, uh, the, the, the the starting front row and the, the front row on the bench, we see them as a, as, a, as a pair, as a unit, you know, not necessarily as, listen, this guy is number one and this guy is number two. There's a tactical or technical reason why we select them like we do. And uh, uh, like, yeah, we, we wouldn't like to go into too much detail and give too much uh, uh, of our, our game plan away. But there's a reason for that. The players know it. Uh, um, and, and as long as they know it, they buy into it. Um, and it's, it's, it's an open and, and honest discussion with them why, why we do things the way we do. And uh, the players are happy with it. We are happy and comfortable with it. And that's, uh, like I say, yeah, it's normally, it, it's a tech, it's a, um, yeah, there's a technical plan to that, yeah. 
Uh, guys, could I please ask that you just ask one question? There's a whole lot of hands that are raised. Um, so we just to get through everybody, if that's fine. Uh, Lloyd, we can go to you. Thanks, Zina. How's it, Chuck? Um, yeah, ju just a word on Dwayne, if you can, please. Uh, how he's come through the week. Um, you know, what you're expecting from him this weekend. How's he been looking? Uh, are you expecting more minutes out of out of Dwayne uh, this weekend? And just what kind of shape do you think he's in at the moment? Yeah, no, listen, yeah, uh, uh, Dwayne, yeah, we expect definitely uh, um, uh, more minutes uh, of Dwayne uh, this weekend. And uh, yeah, no, he's been training well. Um, and uh, yeah, looking forward to, to 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 seeing him again. You know, we all know what quality is, and we all know the experience that he brings to the team. Uh, so uh, yeah, we we had so, we had a good uh, week with him. Yeah, Tony. Uh, hi, Jack. Um, just if I could ask where, whether you were surprised um, with the margin of victory from Argentina against the Wallabies. What you thought of um, the Wallabies' performance in that game, and whether it was kind of shocking, as shocking to you as to some of us. Um, but also about uh, when you were here this time last year, Quade Cooper came back and played extremely well about uh, against you guys. What, uh, tying into that, you, you know, what do you think of the Wallabies without Quade, how, how that changes things and uh, makes them a different proposition? Uh, Tony, yeah. Um... No, listen, uh, I think in 2018, uh, we, we, uh, we probably had one of our biggest losses against Argentina in Argentina. So uh, for us, we know how, how, how tough it is to go and play there and to, and, and to get a victory there. Um, and like I said, listen, uh, we, we can pretty much relate to uh, uh, what, what happened uh, with Australia. I mean, uh, we, we got a proper, proper hiding in 2018 uh, um, uh, against Argentina. Uh, uh, there, so it's a tough place to go and win. They're a passionate group, um, and uh, listen, they can make it tough for you. So, so in terms of, uh, uh, yeah, we, 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 how can I say, we, we know exactly how Australia feel because we've been there before. And then in terms of, yeah, yes, you know, Quaid is an excellent uh, rugby player. Um, he's a special rugby player. But I think, uh, um, uh, um, I don't know who they're going to, and maybe that's the thing. I, I'm not 100% sure who they're going to start at 10 uh, this weekend. But I think Bernard is back, uh, um, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Eh? Yeah, I think he's back into the mix. Uh, obviously, a lot of experience there. Um, yes, he's been out of the mix for quite some time. I think like last year, Quaid was wasn't in the Australian mix for quite some time. So, but but I'm sure he'll slot straight back into the uh, the things. And like I said, he's he's experienced and he can he, he can mix it up. So we probably expect him to start. And uh, um, but yeah, we'll wait and see. Georgina. Hi guys, um, Georgina Robinson, Sydney Morning Herald here. I'm interested in a response from both of you to this question. I think you have something like a 13% win rate against Australia in Australia since 1996. Um, when Australians marvel at that, um, we wonder if um, if it's something about, you know, the rivalry against New Zealand is so important to you that, you know, you grow an extra leg um, and then maybe... Um, suffer against Australia because it doesn't mean as much. Um, but I'm just interested in your take um, on on what might ex explain a poor a poorer record than anyone would expect in Australia. So oh, um, uh, I would say, listen, uh, we definitely there's no difference if we if you represent your country, and I, I'm sure Australia will say the same when you represent your country. Uh, if it's against New Zealand, if against Fiji, if it's against Australia, if it's against uh, Namibia, I mean, you want to you want to produce a performance that your country would be proud of. So it's not that we have an eye on New Zealand and uh, um, and then uh, we 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 take a lesser stance against uh, Australia. I just think Australia and Australia is tough. You know, it's a, a um, and I can't talk about 96 and before that. All I know uh, that we as a group, have, uh, since we've been together uh, since 2018, um, we've played them three times in Australia and we lost all three, you know. So it is a tough game. Uh, we actually 0% uh, our, our group. 
So uh, and it's a big challenge for us, you know, and and uh, it probably for us shows the the passion that uh, that Australia have uh, when they play in front of their own crowd, you know, and uh, yeah, for us it's a massive challenge, and um, uh, yeah, we will prepare as best we can to try and get a result, but it is a tough uh, it is a tough place to come and win uh, 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 for us. Yeah, I can't, can't say much more. Uh, I agree with Chris Chuck. Uh Morgan. <laughs> Hi, Jock. Jock, um, was France always tipped, or was he in the plans to play, get a crack against the Wallabies? And how's his? Are you happy with his match fitness taking into consideration? He hasn't been on the park since 28 May against the Greek Wiz. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, we, we like France. Obviously, uh, um, France had an injury, and like I mentioned, uh, I think when when he got injured uh, 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 against the uh, uh, Greek was in the Curry Cup. Uh, we said, listen, in the Wales series, he needs to get through his rehab, and and he's a guy that we will uh, bring into the squad the moment he's done his rehab and he's he's back to full fitness. So he's actually be, before we got him into our squad, uh, he was busy with the preseason with the Cheetahs. So uh, pretty uh, happy with where he's currently at. Obviously, uh, not playing game uh, or having game time. I mean, that's unfortunately uh, where we are in terms of playing rugby championship now and. Uh, uh, we, how can I say, we we compete internationally in the southern hemisphere, but we compete uh, uh, from a club uh, or franchise level in the northern hemisphere. So I, I, our seasons are a little bit malaligned in terms of that. So, and that's the same thing for for France. It's the same thing for Dwayne. You know, there's no other, there's no club rugby currently where we can let our players play uh, 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 and and see where they are currently at. We can only see it in training sessions, and uh, that's why we want to push the training sessions and intensity to uh, as as high as we can as and uh, as close to match intensity as we can to make an assessment uh, on the players and and uh, obviously we wouldn't have select France if we if we don't think that is uh, that is up to standard so yeah pretty much looking forward to see what France can bring obviously Vili we know what we have in Vili Vili can if we're behind like we were at Wales, 18 points down, he can come and change the game for us. We know he can close a game out for us if, if he has to. Uh, but it is a nice opportunity for us to to see uh, what France can bring to the party. And we, we know uh, last year uh, when we played New Zealand uh, in the rugby championship, um, uh, France came on in the last uh, 40 minutes when we beat New Zealand here uh, in Australia. And you know, know he had an unbelievable game. So we know what he can bring and he's very experienced. So yeah, just looking forward to see, uh, to get uh, France back into the mix and to get him on the park. Um, guys, we are running out of time for the English section. Um, if there are fewer Afrikaans questions, then then we can take more English ones uh, in a little while. But for now, let's just uh, take two more English questions and then, then see... Uh, what the update is for Afrikaans. Uh, so our international media, just just stay on and, and let's see if there's time. Uh, Craig Lewis. Thanks, Ina. <clears throat> Sorry, Jacques. Um, just over a year away to the to the World Cup now. Just how challenging do you find the selection juggling act in terms of obviously having an immediate challenge at hand in terms of the test matches you've you've got uh, in the rugby championship and and obviously the end of year tour, but fairly limited time. To also balance the the game time and building depth, um, just in terms of your your selection decision making, how challenging is it at, at this moment? No, I th I think uh, yeah we've got a, a couple of challenges, and obviously the first challenge for us is to uh, like um, the lady light uh, 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 rightly said, listen we. We, we've got a very poor record against Australia in Australia. So our first uh, uh, aim is to to try and see if we can't get a win here. Like I said, we haven't won a game here in three years that we've been uh, in the three games that we've been involved in coaching a team and as a team being here in South Africa, we, we haven't uh, uh, won a, a game yet. So that's the immediate uh, goal for us. And then the then the next goal is to to uh, we we playing for the rugby championship, you know, and I think uh, it's a very tight affair currently between the four countries and uh, we would like to 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 win the rugby championship but but I would lie and be dishonest if I say listen there isn't let's call it half eye 
uh, uh, on 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 uh, um, the World Cup. You know, we know uh, last year our big challenge was uh, was the British and Irish Lions, and and we wanted to perform there because it's such a rare competition. This year we do have a little bit. Uh, we can be a little bit creative in terms of of, of team selection and building squad depth and giving uh, uh, guys opportunity. But I don't want to say that and people think we devalue the Springboks. We don't. Our first aim is to 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 get a proper performance going against Australia on Saturday, which is a tough gig here in uh, uh, in Australia, and to try and 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 almost uh, 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 change the boards, uh, or if if there's a saying like that, and then obviously to win the rugby championship. But but yes, we do uh, um, also have a half an eye on 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 the World Cup and building squad depth. Yeah, so it is a. I won't say it's a juggling act because winning is still the most important thing. Uh, but if we can and if we do have momentum, we would like to be a little bit creative and uh, and uh, and serve uh, uh, another strategic objective, which is building squad depth. Uh, Ross, how's it, guys? Um, Jacques uh, Elton coming in there on the bench. Obviously, we haven't seen him since the first test against Wales. A difficult one for him, you know, with those his first minutes of the year. How's he been looking in training? And uh, do you think he'll be a lot sharper and you know more composed now against Australia after getting a few more, uh, well, another month or bit in training with you guys? Yeah, no, yeah, like I like I said in the beginning, uh, uh, us going with a five-three split is obviously a tactical uh, thing that we we we've got a specific plan, and um, and 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 is it the right plan? Uh, we op- obviously believe so, uh, but we'll see on Saturday if if that tactical plan is is the correct one or not. Uh, but yes, no, in terms of uh, Elton's form. Uh, like I said, with all the other players, Elton, uh, with uh, with Dwayne, with uh, uh, with France, you know, uh, even Warwick hasn't played since the uh, yeah, he played uh, against Wales in the second Test match. So a lot of uh, uh, the, the only the only place where we can see them is in training sessions, and we really push the training sessions to be as hard as as a game or at match intensity. Um, and, and yes, he's been performing well, so I expect him to be a lot sharper. Yes. Thank you very much, Zina. Um, Yemen, a quick one on how you guys are planning to um, disrupt Australia's for uh, Australia's mode because it's one part of um, the Bok game that did come under not, not under pressure per se, but was well met by New Zealand in the two matches. What was that? I'm saying that how do you guys intend on actually improving the the the, the, the mall, especially when you look at how the All Blacks counted the mall very well in, in the in the past two test matches? Yeah, I think uh, I say every, every test match is a new challenge. Uh, we we know uh, we have things to work on. Obviously, mauling is one. I think we did get reward on on a few malls in the game, uh, penalties and penalty advantage. Uh, but probably we were looking to get a bit more. But yeah, it's, it's something we'll work on. Obviously. Australia will look at us and they know we, we do like mauling, so they'll get plans to stop that. So, yeah, I mean, we, we're going to have to see on, on Saturday which plan is better. Uh, and then last question, Nathan. <laughs> Thank you, Zina. Um, Jock, uh, in your coaching philosophy uh, regarding player selection or policy, do you pick the best players to start a game? I mean, nevertheless, most occasionally most, it seems to work for the box system. I just wonder your opinion on the question because in the previous presser, Regarding the selection, your your answer was very vague. I quote a privilege. Can you just expand on it for the general public in layman's terms? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, yeah, when what I meant is sometimes uh, when we when we do make a team selection, like I like I mentioned numerous times before, we sit down the whole group. And when I say the whole group, the physios, the doctors, the administrative people, and we discuss. Uh, in front of everybody, why we why we go with a specific selection and and it's it's a tactical plan, and and when I say privileged information, sometimes there's something that a play a coach discuss with a player, and if you ask him, and that's what we do, we ask him, listen, do you like this to come out in the media? And they say no, they please, they want th- 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 this is between me and him, then that's what I mean, privilege. Uh, we always said to the to the media, and I think to you guys, that we want to be as open and transparent as possible. But sometimes there's something that a player, that a coach, uh, that it's that that's some of our tactics that we don't want out there. 
and uh, some of our IP that we don't want out there. And and maybe I was uh, I was wrong in saying that it's privilege, but it was. It was a discussion between myself, uh, the other coaches, uh, in terms of tactics, in terms sometimes, like I say, it's something personal with a player that you don't want to discuss and what don't want out in the media. And then we have to respect that. And and that 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 is um, uh, that that's as truthful as I can be. Um, and it's honest. It's uh, Eben will know. Everybody would know. Um, and I think if you if you ask a player, they will say, "Listen, that's how it works with the box. We are open and honest about everything." But sometimes we, from a, a, a tactical point of view, we don't want to share some stuff in the media. And in terms of of uh, select your your question, and do we select the best uh, 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 players? Or, or um, uh, I think that was your your words. And um, we select um, the team. And like I mentioned before, we don't necessarily see uh, our, if you take the front row and, and you were talking about the front row, we don't necessarily see, uh, 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 we, we see the front row as a unit and, and they operate as a unit. There's certain boxes that the guys who start have to tick uh, in a specific test match. And, and there's a tactical reason why we select select it like that. The players know what is those uh, um, those. Uh, the, the goals that they will have to the, the guys who start the game they they know what goals they need to achieve and sometimes they achieve that in 35 minutes sometimes they achieve it in 50 minutes sometimes they achieve it in in 20 minutes you know but they there's certain things that they will have to achieve and the moment they achieve it and we feel it's that uh, it's the right time tactically then we then we will uh, make a substitution but we I think we it's different with maybe other teams we don't necessarily see it as as, as two groups uh the starting pack and the the bench uh, uh we don't see it as two groups we see it as a unit and and uh, that's uh, i hope it answers your question and it gives a little bit more clarity to the public uh but that's how we see it we see it as a unit not as a, a, a as a as a division uh there's 15 guys starting and then eight guys on the bench that's a substitute no if we see it as a unit as a ta it gives us a tactical advantage Guys, thank you so much. That uh, concludes our press conference for this evening. Um, have a lovely day and um, we'll be sending out the recording shortly. Keep well. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.